In this video, we're going to talk about some of my favorite things from the year, as well as the worst tech for me. Oh, and one major decision that will change how I build my smart home in 2024. I can't believe it's already the end of 2023. This year went by way too fast. But before we start 2024, I think we need to do a recap of 2023. So let's start this off with the one automation in my smart home I found the most useful this year. And this was actually a hard one to pick because I actually added a lot of cool automations and they all pretty much handled the boring stuff. But the most useful one has to go to the battery notification I get each morning as part of my morning briefing. I covered how to set this up in a previous video, or at least parts of it, and I'll make sure that video gets linked in the description. But the beauty of this is all I have to do is put the batteries I want to be notified when it's time to change them in a critical battery area. Then each morning, Home Assistant tells me how many need to be replaced and sends the list to the notification panel in Home Assistant so I can refer to it later. And I recently added a step so it creates a to-do on my H8 task to-do list. In the next version, we'll break out each of these into its own item on this list, but for now, this serves as another reminder. Since I set this up, I've been able to keep all of my devices up and running. But the morning briefing this notification is part of got a massive overhaul this year too, thanks to a new Home Assistant feature. 2023 was a big year for the Home Assistant platform. The platform turned 10 years old, and we got some really cool stuff from the year of the voice. We haven't even talked about this M5 Atom and the new wake words, which the first time I showed off being able to say, hey Jarvis, and having the house do something, was the first time my wife's reaction was pure. Yeah, baby, that's what I've been waiting for. Yeah, okay, actually, it was the first time she didn't roll her eyes. But that's practically the same, right? Anyway. It wasn't Home Assistant Assist that had the biggest impact on my ability to automate the boring stuff. It was response variables. This one change led to a whole new way of thinking about automations. And in case you missed this one, response variables allow you to call the service and get data back that you could use in your automation. Getting events from the calendar was the featured use case, but it works well in your own scripts, allowing you to essentially build smart home functions that can be used to automate even more of your smart home. But I think the biggest change is response variables have allowed me to make all of my automations smarter. So I could focus on a situation I wanted to automate and not have to hard code entities. If you missed my videos on that, you can find links in the description. But automations do require devices. So let's talk about the tech that's at the top of that list this year. I don't know about you, but I enjoy playing with new smart home tech, especially when it makes automating stuff easier. And this year I did add some new tech, like this Z-Wave lock from Ultralock, which is absolutely fantastic. But for me, this was the year that I went all in on millimeter wave presence sensors. And while there are probably a couple that could be on this list, my favorite has to be the Everything Presence One. There will be a full video coming out on the Everything Presence One, and it's just not ready yet. But it's on this list not because of its capabilities, although the specs on this device are quite impressive. It's more about the design choices. Lewis and the team over at Everything Smart Home really thought about how this device should fit into your smart home. From the easy setup and integration options to the modular design that allows you to replace parts as the technology improves. He has since released a mini version and he has more coming. This is smart home tech designed to be part of a smart home and not just another device meant to grab your money. Speaking of devices that seem to take more than they return, let's talk about the worst tech. This one is not going to be a surprise to anyone, but the title of worst tech in 2023, in this smart home at least, goes to MyQ. I'm sure you've all heard the story by now, but MyQ was a big deal because it made connecting your garage door to Home Assistant easy. It wasn't local only, but there was a high chance that if you had a new garage door opener installed in the last few years, it was going to be MyQ compatible. And unlike the other options out there, this one didn't require any wiring or DIY solutions. So in terms of integrating disparate smart home tech, it didn't get any easier than MyQ. But the problem was, despite having an API that MyQ owners could access using their credentials, the Chamberlain Group decided to shut down access in the name of protecting service quality. Due to the public outcry, the Chamberlain Group put out a statement claiming that 0.2% of their user base was generating more than half of the traffic to their API and categorized it as a DDoS attack that impacted the service quality of their 10 million plus users. 
So if I'm reading the situation correctly, Chamberlain is claiming 200,000 users or so were connecting to their API using their own MyQ credentials and were able to overwhelm that API to the level that it disrupted services for all their customers. Wait, hold on. What just happened? Okay, I have no experience building enterprise APIs, but I have worked for years in enterprise IT operations, supporting public facing services like the MyQ API. And these days I'm automating data pipelines and analytical models in a world where I can't control the quality of upstream data. And those models and pipelines are dependent on that quality of data. If you don't design your services and code to limit what it accepts from users, who will always do things in ways that weren't intended and perhaps ways you never dreamed of, the quality of your service is going to be garbage. But I'm going to give Chamberlain's IT team here the benefit of the doubt. I would expect at least the majority of them to know what they're doing. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there. That, plus in the lead up to this decision, we saw no news articles about how the MyQ platform was having widespread service quality issues. And with 10 million plus users, and with what was described as, quote, at times constituted a substantial DDoS event, we would have heard that users were finding their garage door slow to respond or perhaps going offline because they couldn't reach that MyQ API. I went back and looked, given the Home Assistant integration has been around since 2017, and the two biggest stories I found were Chamberlain shutting down HomeBridge because it wasn't selling well, and in 2021, it was reported that MyQ had been removed from Google due to a service interruption, but was later added back within a few days. Then earlier this year, Chamberlain removed Google support altogether because it seemed, quote, no one liked it. No other news stories about widespread outages. Just the history of Chamberlain removing platform support because they weren't making enough money off of it. Then you add that Chamberlain requires platforms to pay a fee to allow people that bought the MyQ hardware to use that hardware from a third-party platform, and I think it becomes clear this had nothing to do with service quality and everything to do with MyQ needing a continuous stream of income from a device that you purchase one time. And I can't fault them for that. Running cloud services can be expensive, even more so if you didn't design them well enough to control how much resources those services consume when their users do things that those services weren't designed for. But it's also clear that MyQ's main goal here is not selling you a garage door system that you can integrate into your smart home. Chamberlain has made it clear they're selling the idea that we can automate our garage door solely for the purpose of getting other platforms who have more money to pay them, probably because they know their own customers would say no if they tried to sell us a subscription to use their product. While I don't have a problem with cloud services involved with my smart home, I do have an issue with companies selling hardware just to sell a cloud service. So because of that, MyQ gets the title of Worst Tech of 2023. There were some good surprises though this year that I really wasn't expecting. For a lot of people, I'm sure Home Assistant delivering local wake words was a surprise. But for me, as soon as I saw chapter one of Year of the Voice, I knew they would get it done this year. The surprise for me this year was actually Matter, which from the beginning, I've been skeptical of Matter and have never bought into the hype. But I have seen enough in 2023 that make me think if Matter can stick it out, it's going to be useful to Home Assistant. We all hate the idea of adding extra hubs, but I think the idea that we'll be able to build a complete smart home using a single platform is just not going to happen. Both SwitchBot and Akara have added Matter to their hubs and integrating the devices attached to those hubs with Home Assistant is super easy using Matter. On top of that, the integration to Home Assistant is local, which means if your internet goes down, you won't be able to control your Acara smart home using the Acara app, but you would be able to control those devices using Home Assistant. Not only that, Third Reality has started to get into the Matter arena as well. This is their Matter enabled nightlight. Pretty unassuming, and it doesn't have that wow factor on the surface. Third Reality does have a Matter focused app that will allow you to control this device but this device connected right up to Home Assistant directly using Matter. Actually, this is the first device I've got my hands on that connects directly to Home Assistant's Matter integration without a lot of headache. And while in this case, the LUX sensor seems to be a little off and you can't update the Matter firmware, automating this based on occupancy in Home Assistant 
has been rock solid. And since it can change colors, this would be awesome for a notification light for people that might have just walked into a room. Matter has a long way to go to fulfill the promise it's made, but I have seen enough to make me confident that Matter could live up to its promises. The only question remaining is will the companies that have to give up some of their control for that to actually happen? Let that happen. And that brings us to the future of my smart home. Because for the most part, I've been pretty device and service agnostic in my smart home. If the device or service can help me solve a problem, then it could stay. And if it's local, even better. But Brian's video about the current state of the smart home got me thinking about being more selective about the products I add to my smart home. Which means it's time to talk about Tuya. Tuya has found its way into so many products out there. This Zigbee motion sensor. This galaxy lamp. These lamps from Decala. This EchoZ robot vacuum. And these Lumeri LED light bulbs. But the problem is the Tuya products, with the exception of the Zigbee device, rely heavily on the Tuya cloud. Thankfully, we have an integration that allows us to integrate these devices with Home Assistant over the local network without going through the Tuya cloud. And for the most part, it's been reliable. Well, with the exception of the occasional Lumeri LED light bulb that seems to stop responding until it's rebooted. And while I don't mind tinkering, the reality is getting these devices integrated over the local network, even with that integration, takes more time than I want to spend. And frankly, there have been a lot of new local only options. So the extra step to get these devices to talk with Home Assistant locally is just not worth it. So 2023 is the end of two year devices for me at least until they've embraced Matter and I can integrate these using that Matter integration. Until then, I won't be adding any more to your devices. And in early 2024, I'm actually gonna replace all of these Lumeri lights with normal dimming bulbs and this Lutron Diva dimmer switch. So expect that video soon, which means I guess that's it for 2023. I didn't get as many videos out as I had planned, which means I've got a lot of ideas for videos in 2024. So if you haven't subscribed, hit that button. And with that, I hope each of you has had a wonderful holiday and here's to wishing you a happy new year of automating the boring stuff.